Happy Saturday, Heat fans, but unfortunately is not a happy Saturday in general because Terry Rozier is out on a week-to-week -week basis, according to Barry Jackson. He had the report earlier today. I woke up, I went on Twitter, and I saw what Barry tweeted, and it was absolutely heartbreaking for us Heat fans. What did he say exactly? He said, per source, Heat guard Terry Rozier's neck while improving is not healthy enough yet he's week to week at this point but the injury is not considered career threatening per source well there's a couple takeaways i had here it's like one well it's unlikely Miami's going to have Terry Rozier for the first round series against the Boston Celtics. So both him and Jimmy Butler will be out for Miami because even though it's a week to week and technically if after one week you come back, that would already be three games for Miami and the fourth coming on that Monday. And if he's not ready for Saturday's game, would he really be ready for Monday game four in Miami? Unlikely. So Unless you extend this to like seven games and get all the way to the second weekend here and make this a two-week series, I am very skeptical of Terry Rozier returning. But then also the career-threatening stuff is something that caught my eye. I actually quote tweeted it and said career threatening with a couple of exclamation points and question marks and Barry actually responded to me saying yeah it's always a good thing to check in and just ask the player and team if it is career threatening with any neck, and neck injury because it is usually that serious when you are dealing with the upper extremities especially with the neck because of nerve damage and stuff like that. Before we dive more into the injury report for Miami and everything else, make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're going to be live for every game against the Boston Celtics. We had one hell of a stream against the Chicago Bulls on Friday. Make sure you join the fun. That will be all four-plus games against the Boston Celtics. We'll also have you covered with videos in between every single game, breaking down injury updates, the game, and everything that you could possibly ask for for Miami. I'm Nick Roloff. I'll have you covered. Subscribe and join the channel today. All right, but this is what Barry actually said in response to me earlier today when I asked the career-threatening stuff. He said, yep, got to ask on all neck injuries, scary stuff, but this is not a career-threatening injury like some other neck injuries. So, I mean, there's been a lot of history with neck issues because, like, you just look across the league, you're like, that is a very scary thing to deal with because neck is obviously connected to the spine, which could cause injuries that don't just affect basketball, but affect life, folks. So neck injuries are always something that are concerning. The one thing that just caught me by surprise, and I've continued to outline this fact, really, when talking about Rozier injury updates over the last week and a half is, well, he came back, he had a neck injury, he played on Sunday against the Indiana Pacers, only played in the first half, and then missed the next where he hasn't played since. But like after that game, they said, yeah, I probably shouldn't have played. We're just going to get right and be healthy. But then just four days later, he was a game time decision and questionable for the game on Friday night against the Toronto Raptors. And then he doesn't play. And I've continued to say, I thought they were just being cautious and holding him out on Friday and Sunday was just to make sure he was healthy for the play in games. But then evidently we are here a week and a half later from those games and or that Raptors game on Friday and he's still week to week. So I just really don't understand what the Heat medical staff was either thinking, playing Terry Rozier against the Pacers on that Sunday, listing him as questionable in a game time decision, or I just don't know what Miami was thinking at that point because it felt misleading. And unless they felt and saw something completely different, I don't know how you go from a game time decision and questionable to being out on a week to week basis a week late after he was a game time decision. That, to me, just doesn't make any sense. We're going to break down what this means for Miami in this series against Boston, but make sure you spam those twos down below. Show Terry Rozier the love to get him healthy and right because we were banking on him being a massive impact player for Miami in this postseason run, whether it was with Jimmy or not. That's why they dealt for him a week and a half before the trade deadline, Kyle Lowry in the first, to get Terry because he's a dynamic player. Spam those twos down below. 
the Heat are going to be missing a big-time player. And, yeah, we haven't had him for the past two weeks, but Rozier played 31 games for Miami this season, and he was just flat-out phenomenal. He got off to that rocky start, shooting under 35% from the field and under 25% from three in his first seven to ten games, but he really righted the ship in a good way. In the first, the, the week and a half, two weeks leading up to this neck injury, he was playing some of the best ball in his career in terms of a winning standpoint but also just in a scoring standpoint. He finished his 31 games in a Heat uniform into the postseason, averaging 16.4 points per game, 4.6 assists, four rebounds, while shooting 42% from the field and 37% from three. Those are just fantastic numbers. And when you take into account that the start Rozier got out to and how much he struggled at the beginning to boost his efficiency and boost those shooting splits up to 42% and 37% just showed you how well he was playing on the offensive side of the basketball leading up to this injury. And it's devastating because especially without Jimmy Butler, all Heat fans were hoping Rozier was going to be able to return and provide that scoring punch in the backcourt alongside Tyler Hero because in this series, the Heat are going to have to score and keep up with the high-octane offense that the Boston Celtics have with Porzingis, Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Drew Holiday. Like They have a very good offense that is going to require Miami to score 110 on a nightly basis if they want to win some of these games and overtake the Celtics and maybe one of the biggest upsets in NBA history as a 1-8 matchup. So it stinks that Rozier is not going to be there, and it's now going to put a lot of shoulder or a lot of pressure on Tyler Hero and Bam at Abaya's shoulders to carry the offensive load like they did on Friday against the Chicago Bulls. But listen, the Celtics are not the Bulls, and you are going to have to play perfect basketball to even really be in position to win a game late in these series. All right, before we talk more about this series in depth, as we are slated to get tipped off in just 24 hours, um, I got to give a shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's video. They're the best daily fantasy sports app and platform in North America. And as the playoffs officially begin today, you can still get an entry in for Magic Cavs as they are set to tip off the NBA postseason. Get started with all these games. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four selections. You can mix and match two. You don't have to go one game in the postseason. You can have an entry or a player stat projection in every single game if you wanted to. You can also go to the MLB area. You can go to the NHL. You can do whatever you want, which is what makes Prize Picks the best daily fantasy sports platform. So get started today. Pick more, pick less. It's that simple prizepicks.com slash clns use code clns or just go to your app store and download the app and then use code clns to get a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars shots prize picks for sponsoring today's video uh, I do want to go over some of my keys to victory because there is really nothing else to talk about on the injury report for the first game against the Celtics. Rozier is clearly out week to week. Jimmy Butler is out with the sprained MCL. Obviously, Josh Richardson's out for the year. But other than that, the Heat are going to have their guys in terms of Tyler, Hawkes, Jovic, um, Bam, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson. Those guys are all going to be ready to go. And if you didn't see the preview video I put out yesterday night after the Heat defeated the Chicago Bulls, well, that's why you need to be subscribed and turn on the notifications so you don't miss those type of videos. But I did have four keys to victory in order for Miami to pull up the biggest upset in NBA history. And this would be the biggest upset in NBA history. I know we as an eight seed beat a one seed uh, Bucks last year, but the 8-1 upset does not happen often. And considering that the Heat are without their best player in Jimmy Butler and then another 17-plus point-per-game score for the season and Terry Rozier going up against a team that just won 64 games and is arguably one of the best constructed rosters in NBA history. I know it sucks to give Celtics credit. This would be the biggest upset of all time. So you're going to need to play absolutely perfect in this seven-game series in order to pull off the upset. Now, I do think Miami can do it, and my official prediction is Heat in six because I have the guts, and I am never, ever, ever going to pick against the Miami Heat. I don't care what the odds are, especially when they're playing Boston. I'm going to have the guts. The only team that I would be considering coming on here and telling you that the Heat are unlikely going to win 
would be against the Denver Nuggets. But we'll cross that road if we have to get there. So my first key is Bam Adebayo has to be a top two player in this series. And I don't think this is an outstretched thing to say. I don't think this is egregious because... If we just go down the list of each team and each roster, Bam Adebayo is the second best player in this series. Tatum is clearly the best. He's a top five, top 10 player in this league. Bam Adebayo, I have him as a between top 15, top 20 player in the NBA with how impactful he is defensively and how he impacts winning. And if the Heat want to win, he has to play like that top two player in this series he is. Like, Jalen Brown has the ability to be the best player in the Boston Celtics at times. That, that is true. He can be that. But I think in every single game the Miami Heat play, Bam and Abayo has to be the top two guy in that game. If Jason Tatum wants to go off, that's cool. If Jalen Brown wants to go off, that's cool. But as long as Bam is consistently putting up 20-plus points, 10 rebounds, while playing the defense that he is very capable of doing, I think he is going to be someone that is the X factor for Miami. And it's crazy to say that Bam, who is our best player on the floor without Jimmy, is an X factor. But with how spotty he is offensively at times and how unwilling he is to take 20-plus shots, yeah, on offense, he is an X factor because you don't know what you're going to get from Bam on a night to night basis on the offensive side of the floor. You do on defense, but you don't know on offense. Bam has to be a top two player in this series if Miami wants to stand any chance. The underrated part about Bam, by the way, in this series is how well we actually match up with Boston now on the defensive side of the floor. Like, I know it's crazy to say that. But when you really think about what we can do defensively, now that we have Nikola Jovic, it changes a lot because, well, Jovic at 6'10", 6'11", or if Kevin Love is going to be playing alongside Bam in the series, which I would anticipate a lot, by the way, you can put Kevin Love or Nikola Jovic, who are whoever's playing alongside Bam, on Christoph Porzingis, on Al Horford, and let Bam roam on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and disrupt them. I mean, we just saw the other day, yeah, DeMar DeRozan is a much older player and less dynamic than Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, but Bam completely shut down DeMar DeRozan for most of the night yesterday. That is the versatility that Adebayo brings to the table and why he's the best defensive player in the league. I don't give a shit about Victor Wembanyama and Rudy Gobert protecting the rim and blocking. Show me another player that can protect the rim like Bam can, but can also go out and defend quicker wings that are experienced at getting to the rim and in the mid-range and just completely get them out of the game plan like Bam Adebayo can. You can't. So I anticipate Bam being on Jalen Brown slash Jason Tatum for the majority of the series with whatever big they play alongside him on Kristaps Porzingis slash Al Horford. Which brings me to Haywood Highsmith because he is going to be a disruptive force on the defensive side of the floor. And sure, the offense could be dicey at times, but a lineup of Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, Haywood Highsmith, um, Bam, and then one of Jovic and Kevin Love can be unbelievably good defensively. And yes, Hero is going to be the question mark there. He'll be likely put on Drew Holiday or Derek White. But having Caleb Martin on whatever guard you don't put Tyler Hero on, and then Bam on either Brown or Tatum, Highsmith on the other, and then, you, like I said, Caleb, like that is a very good defensive team that actually matches up really well with the Celtics. And if the Heat want to win this game, that defense has to travel, which we know it will. And they're going to have to muddy up the waters and make these games a dogfight to get to 100 points. I said that earlier in the video. Miami's going to have to score 110 on a nightly basis to win to win because that's how Boston plays and that's how capable they are offensively. But if Miami does want to win this series, there is going to have to be out of the seven game series, I'd say four out of the seven games have to barely get to a hundred points. That, that, that's just how it's going to have to be if Miami has to win. Now, I do think they have the tools to do that. Even with Hawkes, he can get in and play well defensively. He's actually on a heater, by the way, average, scoring 15-plus over his last four games, another 20-point performance on Friday against the Bulls. So this wing youth movement Miami has with Martin, Hawkes, Highsmith, and then Bam on the perimeter as well is going to have to muddy up the waters. Another key to victory to me is light them up from three in – retrospect here like Miami yes they're gonna have to muddy the waters and make it a close tough 
game to get to 100 points. Miami's going to have to shoot the lights out from three. The Celtics are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the NBA. Um, they have a bunch of weapons from the outside. All five guys in their starting lineup are very capable three-point shooters. You cannot leave any of them wide open, ranging from Drew Holiday to Kristaps Porzingis. You just can't do it. So you have to beat them at their own game by hitting a lot of threes. So Duncan Robinson, Tyler, you have to be efficient from beyond the arc. And Haywood Highsmith, who kind of struggled offensively in the two play-in games, um, he's going to have to knock down some threes as well. We know Caleb Martin has a good history against Boston. Shout out to Caleb for last year's Eastern Conference Finals heroics. Um, But he's going to have to play well from beyond the arc as well. You're going to need to shoot, I think, at least 38% from three in this series to win. And that's at least, folks. Like, in a seven-game series, like, 38% is really... Like, that's obviously good, and that would be amongst some of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. But, like, in a seven-game series where numbers get changed quite a bit based on one bad game to one good game, you're going to shoot have to shoot 38% from three at minimum in order to beat the Boston Celtics as you already are offensively struggling and got issues with no Jimmy, no Rozier, those other guys have to knock down their threes. Lastly, I do want to talk about Derek White and not letting him have any crazy heroics as we saw in game six of the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Listen, he's a folk hero for Boston and I would argue he is the fan base's second favorite player. And I think I talked to producer Smitty, who's a Celtics fan, about this, and he agreed. Like, the favorite player on the team is Jason Tatum. And number two, in terms of fan perspective, is probably Derek White. And when you're playing in Boston, in TD Garden, that crowd is going to be extra amped up for anything that Derek White does. So when you're on the road, and if you're playing seven games in this series, that means it's going to be four times in Boston. You can't have these Derek White big time moments, dunks, blocks, three point barrages that happened earlier in the season when we played Boston. You can't let Derek White fire up this crowd because him and Al Horford are two of the best in the NBA at getting their own fan base up and ready to go. So you cannot allow Derek White to have any heroics in this series. Those are my four main keys to victory. There's obviously a bunch of other stuff Miami has to do, but those are the four I wanted to highlight. And that will do it for today's video. Let me know who you got down below. Miami, type MIA. If you think Boston wins, type BOS. One last reminder, we will be live for this game. 12 p.m. Central Time tip, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be live 30 minutes beforehand. No Smitty because he is a Celtics fan, so get him out of here. We will have my guy Cullen producing the live show. Shout out to Cullen. He's a bunch of fun. We're going to have a lot of good times throughout this playoff series. So join us and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you tomorrow for the game one of the NBA playoffs against the Celtics. Go Heat.